on today's episode. Back in the early 1970s, when I started out in my electronics hobby, this would have been your dream power supply. Horrendously heavy, horrendously expensive. I can't remember exactly how much, but certainly in the hundreds of pounds back in those days. I did eventually manage to acquire this one, and that is another story. These days, of course, with microelectronics and uh, switch mode digital technology, they're able to produce something like this for under £15, which is absolutely incredible. Arguably, it has uh, better specifications even than the venerable Farnell, 0 to 30 volts at up to 2 amps, an adjustable current limit. This guy can't go quite down to zero, but about 0 0.6 volts up to 36 volts at up to 5 amps or 80 watts. This is obviously just the control module. What we're also going to need is some way of powering it, and I'm going to be using this old laptop power supply. These can be had for free normally. Anywhere that repairs laptops and such like is no doubt going to have a box of them and uh, would be very happy to give you them. If not, ask any of your relatives. They've probably got a, an old dusty laptop under a bed somewhere and you can nab the power supply from that. This one is 19.5 volts at up to 4.7 amps which makes it uh, just over 90 watts. Uh, quite a good match for this little unit. Let's move on now then and uh, build ourselves a little power supply using this module and test it out to see how it performs. Things couldn't really get much simpler than this module. Just the four connections, the voltage in and the voltage out. Made up a couple of leads. I have some suitable binding posts. I've cut down the lead on the power supply to a manageable length. That's more than enough for my desktop area. Let's just check what the polarity is of the power supply unit. The convention would be that this would be positive and the outer screen negative, but one never knows. Outer screen then. And yes, the inner is positive, and there we can see our 19.35 volts. Following the theme of simplicity, all that you really need is a box with a rectangular cutout to mount this in. However, I do have the luxury of a 3D printer, and I'll leave a link. Somebody has kindly uploaded this design to Thingiverse with a nice ventilated base there. I we'll need to put some little feet on here to lift that up to allow the air to circulate. has a hole in the back there. I'm just going to pass the cable through. Uh, you could also put a, a socket in there if you wanted to be able to detach that. Holes for the binding posts on the front, all looking very nice. I'll go ahead now and complete the assembly. Here then the completed unit, nice colourful display there, nice and bright even under the video lights which I have on. There are some seven pages detailing all the information that you can get on the display here. I don't intend to go through all of that, I'll just go through the basics. If you have any specific questions then please ask in the comments down below. At the end here, M0, that is the first memory location. There are 10 available, M0 through M9. M0 is set to 5 volts and a maximum of 5 amps. It's switched off at the moment. It should start up with no load in constant voltage mode. If I switch it on then, no load. Let's just check what the output voltage is according to the meter and it's as near as damn it spot on 5 volts as we would expect. If you press the button it highlights the voltage here or the current. Highlight again and you can adjust the output voltage on the fly as it were. So we take it up to 5.5, uh, 5.5 on the display there, and we could also change the current. Let's show a real world example now. If I press and hold this button down for more than two seconds, if I press it again, M1. Now M1 I've set to 12 volts at a maximum of one amp. That I'm going to use to drive this LED module. 
power is off at the moment. Connect up the supply, hit the on button, and it changes to constant current. We can see a very bright light there altogether. Wow, that's bright. Let's just switch that off again. With the LED put to one side so it doesn't blind us anymore, as the LED is drawing a little over the maximum that I'd set of one amp, it has gone into constant current mode as it should, and the output voltage has dropped accordingly. On the temperature reading there, it's gradually creeping up as the internals warm up. We haven't heard the fan switch on yet. The fan should switch on at any settings above one amp and if the internal temperature gets above 50 degrees C. Let's demonstrate that now by changing the LED out for my DC load. My DC load is set for one amp at the moment, not switched on. This is the same setting at 12 volts at up to five amps. If I switch that on now, nothing happens until I've switched the load on as well. Now we can see the load appearing here and I can adjust the value by turning the knob here. So we take it up to two amps. Now, I guess you probably can't hear that, but the fan has started inside the little unit there. It is remarkably silent, which is unusual for these things. That's uh, very, very welcome. Though it's not going to cause a great deal of noise in your home environment. Let's keep going then, up to three amps, four amps, what is useful to note also is the wattage. Remember that the maximum wattage that this can output is 80 watts. Getting up there now to 5 amps, which is the maximum of this load. And everything seems quite comfortable. The internal temperature is still creeping up there. Ambient temperature where we are at the moment is some 30 odd degrees at least. Therefore, do not take this as an indication of the device will overheat. It's just that uh, it's summertime in southern Spain. Let's try and demonstrate now the maximum load. For example, if we were to set this to, say, 25 volts, 25 volts at 1 amp, some 25 watts, You can see there that the output voltage has cut off and we have OPP, so it's over power. Set the load back to one amp, and there it is, happy again at 25 volts, one amp. Crank it up again, 74 watts, 76, 77, so we're on the limit there, 79 watts. We go one over and there we are the automatic protection has kicked in and saved the day don't worry about the load what we're really interested in is this little guy here who's performing flawlessly i may say very impressed indeed especially given the heat that we're experiencing today as i mentioned earlier there are some seven pages of instructions and details on what all the screens mean and how you would adjust things. I couldn't find that in a downloadable form. What I've done then is to take some screenshots and down in the description you can find a link to a PDF file containing all of that information for you. A very valuable addition to any hobbyist's workshop, I think you'll agree. Thanks for watching.